Code of Ethics that what as a member of IIA, you know, what, what uh, ethics we have to follow. Then, uh, you know, the uh, implementation standard, attribute standards. These two standards, like attribute and performance, is going to implement is decide your implementation. As I told you, as much strong you will be, as much uh, competent you are, as much performance things you have, it will be strong implementation at the end of the day. Then we have strongly recommended guidance. What is that? That is we have position paper, practice advisories and practice guides. What are those? Position papers are the brief summaries. Like it's defining your role or mission. Practice advisory is one step detailed. And practice guides as a guide concept is if this situation, this do this, if this situation, do this. So these are the different level of the thing, right? This is for international press, pre professional practices. I mean, it suits to IIA also, but this is a professional practice framework. Uh, this is because there is only one institute in the world that is Institute of Internal Audit, right? So, which says that if, you, if this is the IPBF framework, uh, you should have mandatory guidance. We have strongly recommended in mandatory guidance. First of all, define what is auditing to you. The second is what is the code of ethics you know, what you define, because code of ethics is very important. Nowadays, ethics are required. You know, people, as a member of IAA, if they do bad things, it will create a bad name for the members, for the rest of the members, right? He says uh, FCPA, that is Foreign Corrupt Practices A. What is that? Let me give you an uh, on uh, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act is something very, you can say, uh, old, it's like 1977. What happened is when the American companies, they become so big, they feel like, you know, they have technology, they have money. So let's go out and, you know, or rule over the world, right? So they come out of U.S. The first country they went to, uh, the first man they interacted was a president and a prime minister, right? So they bribe them, you know, for getting licensing, the manufacturing, X, Y, Z, right? Okay. So which was, came in the notice of Congress later and uh, they feel it's very bad because it's a bad name for Americans if they do like that. So they make this law, Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Right? According to that, all companies must maintain a system of internal control and they should avoid Corrupt payments. What is corrupt payment? Which is given to induce someone for doing something or not doing something in your benefit. Let's talk about Surveys Oxley. Shortly we called it as SOX here. Uh, this is again uh, in 2000, uh, uh, and like there was a scandal, right? Uh, Yvonne and something. So these companies has to file the bankruptcy. Later the court investigated that directors were not sincere with the company. And there was, they found during the investigation that there was no compulsion, there is no code, there is no corporate governance. So they bring it through SOX. SOX uh, says that every listed company should have to apply corporate governance. And what is a corporate governance that we should have a shareholders, board of directors, it should have committees like audit committee, budget committee, finance committee. And they should appoint one CEO who will run the show of the company day to day operation, he will handle. He will later hire CFO, CIO, you know, all these uh, uh, the resignations. And then board has to appoint through audit committee a CAE chief audit executive who is the head of audit. He will be reporting to them and uh, he will be an independent person. He will keep an eye on the uh, operational efficiency of the work management run by the CEO. Right? So uh, he says that each member of the audit committee must be an independent member. So generally what, what happens is internal auditor, external auditor and a financial expert 
who is not the member, who is not the employee, and he has no stake in the company. Appoint the internal auditor, audit committee. Who will appoint the external auditor, audit committee, right? SOX also imposes specific reporting requirement that is on CEO and CFO time to time for SEC and other things they have to compliance with certain things. What are the qualities of the information? Information should be sufficient to believe that evidence is uh, sufficient to make a decision. The reliable, we can trust on that. It should be relevant to the scope of the assignment and it should be useful. That helps the organization to meet its objectives. What are the sources? There could be internal sources and external sources. So internal sources is, for example, your vouchers, your journals, your records. Internal, external is the, the which you are doing for external. For example, you are writing a check internal, but it is for a bank, right? External, internal is, you know, some suppliers send you one invoice. This is supplier invoice. External information is confirmation of the receivable sent in response to the internal audit request. Outsourcing services, you know, uh, is when you don't do some work, for example, some companies what they do, they don't hire cleaners, they go to a cleaning company and they will sign an agreement, this is outsourcing. When you hire your own cleaner, this is insourcing, right? What should be the nature of the information? That is, first of all, we should see as, it, can it be a legal evidence? You know, all information cannot be a legal evidence because court has certain criteria to record as evidence. Direct evidence is witness testimony is a form of direct evidence, means that you have a witness for something, it become a direct evidence. Circumstances evidence means circumstances will prove that this happened. And conclusive evidence is like watch in the desert, you know, just an example. That, that, is, that is easy to make for yourself a conclusion. You can base, when you see in a desert, you can see everything, right? It's open platform. So it, it will help you to conclude something. And uh, collaborative effort, which is collaborate with someone, right? Which is to reinforce a fact and conclusion that can be inferred from other evidences. Audit evidence it can be physical information, it can be testimonial, it can be documentary, and it can be analytical. Because in audit, sometimes what we do is we calculate ratios, we link certain variables, and we come out a conclusion that, for example, cost of goods sold is not correct here. Because the inventory is decreasing, you know, purchase is increasing, so based on some factors, we can say a cost of goods sold is not good, right? What are the analytical procedures that uh, should be providing an auditor an efficient and effective way of obtaining evidences? Because sometimes the evidence is not that clear here. So we have to link certain variables based on our analytical skills to, so it should be efficient and effective. It includes like unexpected differences. Like you, if you use a budget and you compare with the actual, you will come to know about the variances. Absence of differences when they are expected, potential errors, fraud, unusual non-recurring uh, non transactions. For example, you are comparing monthly sales and you observe that in one month the sales become 300 times more. So what happened actually, this is an investigating point. Like it may be overstatement. You know, when you analyze things, it will help you to make an evidence. Analytical procedure include comparing current with budgeted, studying the relationship between financial and non-financial information. You can see, okay, this is the salary is increasing. But on the other hand, you will see the employees are decreasing. So how this is, you know, this is analytical procedure. 
studying relationship between the elements of information, comparing information with expectation based on similar information of other organizations, that is comparing yourself with the industry best practices. When the analytical audit procedure identify unexpected relationships,